heard, uh, sorry, who have watched our videos on our channel will remember Eugene. Uh, in the previous Imperial Summons tournament, he was also playing Scorpion. And he was uh, playing like a, a Dragon Drop Bear version. Now, I'm not sure if he's changed his deck uh, between that time and this, with uh, what with the new cards coming out in the, the different Dynasty packs. But uh, who won that one? Eugene won that one. Yeah, he went he Scissors. Yeah. Yeah, so Rob's going to go first. Okay. Gene, uh, he's uh, showing like he's um, showing us those really cool-looking scorpion uh, fate tokens. I'm gonna say this is one of the games where I actually really like the original cardboard tokens. Yeah, me too. I, they're they're small enough that when you put them on a character, it doesn't like completely obscure the yeah. text. Like it's really cool, and I think that. This game offers a lot to those people who really like to kind of declare themselves for a clan, to kind of show off their clan loyalty in a sense. Though, I will say that I, I do like the honor coins uh, from Worlds. Just having ones and fives make it a little bit easier to manage your honor. Yeah. Not a huge, not a huge fan. Uh, like, I usually don't mind dice for marking things, but I'm not a huge fan in this game. Oh, you mean like for marking things like honor and fate, yeah. right? Yeah. Like for, for province strength, or sorry, for uh, skill strength, I don't mind yeah, that for, much, but... Absolutely. Yeah, that, I, I think, is reasonable because it's very uh, temporary. And I guess it's just, I like, there's a lot of people I've seen who, like, are using, like, a 20-sided die, and it's like a model die, and it's, like, right. at a glance, you're not realizing what the number is. But, I mean, that's just being picky. So this is going to be interesting, as both clans are very political heavy. Um, it's going to be almost kind of the opposite of what we saw in the last round, with two very heavy military clans going at it. Yeah. Uh, Eugene showing us favorite ground, Shishiro, actress, Bayushi Yanako, and a manipulator. On Rob's side, we see Doju Hataru, I think yep. it is. Yeah, it is. Yep. Uh, savvy Politician, Asahina Artisan, which was, was Rob's first play, and the Guest, of, Guest Honor. of Honor. So both players starting with their one drops. Uh, actress, generally not a good play, turn one. Uh, so Manipulator is uh, something that allows you to increase your bid by one after you reveal dial, so very good, uh, not only for drawing extra cards, but in Scorpion, if your opponent keeps matching you bid for bid, it's still a way to farm honor from them. Guest of Honor comes in with two fate on it. Yep, really good card against Scorpion because they tend to be event heavy when they play conflicts. Speaking of events, we see two powerful ones in Eugene's hand, a policy debate and a forged edict. Yeah, so the policy debate came out, what, two packs ago, and it allows you to declare a political duel, uh, and if you win, you get to look at your opponent's hand and choose and discard a card. If, what it's is the, the, the winner gets the winner. to choose, winner. yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a really strong card, and I think that uh, the winning crab deck in, it was the winning crab deck at Madrid, kind of showed that basically any clan can uh, any clan can run that event. Yeah, because you can you almost always will have one opposing character and one of your own characters where it's a favorable uh, point spread uh, on political, even if your deck is not very politically focused. Eugene does decide to bring Hiro in with or no, Yunako. Yunako, sorry. By Yushi Yunako. She's the one that allows you to switch military and political uh, skill during a conflict. I saw the four costs and I immediately went to the other character. So it looks like five to three. Uh, is Eugene going to modify his bid? We'll see. 
Now, generally, I feel like the, the proper thing to do when you're playing against Scorpion so is he not, not choose to modify his dial, so. Or he did. Because we gave away three fate. So he did use the uh, manipulator's reaction. Now, the manipulator's reaction is interesting now that there's a duel that Scorpion wants to play. Because it gives you the flexibility to, you know, optimize your bids, yep. or even like bid higher than your opponent possibly can. Uh, with all of, with with such a common duel now in almost all decks, you start to wonder if contingency plans might start to see a little bit of play, which allows you to modify your bid in either direction. Contingency contingency plan is a tough one just because you're. You're you're basically losing a card. I mean, if the if the bid is, sorry if the duel is good enough, or sorry important enough, then I can see that being justified. But uh, contingency plan I've actually seen used in these honor rush way of the chrysanthemum decks. Yep. Uh, that try to rush to twenty five honor with way of the chrysanthemum, and then you uh, contingency to paint yourself down to zero a zero bid. But we're going to see Rob start off with a Guest of Honor doing a political conflict air against the Shameful Display province. Shameful Display, big, big game against Crane. Yeah, I don't think that's what he was hoping to see. Now, Rob does have uh, Asahina Artisan as backup. Yeah. As well as Yunako uh, to potentially switch the Guest of Honor's uh, strength if it does come to that. Oh, sorry. Now, I, I do. I, I'm not sure. Does Bayushi Yunako require her to be in the conflict? No. I feel like it does. Okay. No, it doesn't. But anyway, he's decided to commit her. But even just a shameful display is enough to flip it. Anything in uh, Rob's hand that is super great. I mean, he can wave the crane back up. I see a first shame in his hand as well. So you can use it to remove gotta, the, gotta, yeah. the honor token. Yeah. Yep. So that's going to bring him back to four. So he is technically still winning this conflict. That's true. Although I feel like with, a, with shameful display, especially if you're crane, you just want to try to try to break it as soon as possible. Yeah, so it looks like Eugene's just going to be... So he uses Yunako's ability to flip the uh, yeah. point values and get the water. So here's a for shame. Yep. Okay. So that's going to bring him to two political strength, I believe. It will. Yeah, now Rob... Which puts, puts, him in, hand. puts him in the... Uh, yeah. Puts him in range of the uh, stronghold. Great and stronghold lets you bow a character in a political conflict with two two or less strength. Yep. Yeah, so without without the ability to play any events from his hand, I don't think there's <laughs> much that Eugene can do here. I may have just I may have just bowed to maintain the honor. Uh yeah. But I I always forget about the crane stronghold when I'm playing yes. against crane, so I feel like it's one of those struggles that's largely irrelevant most of the time, but when it is relevant, it's a blowout. I feel like when I'm playing against Crane, it's always relevant. I feel like I'm always like having to make a, 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 a awkward play to work around it. Yeah. So Eugene was just asking if it's okay to go back to trigger Seeker. So Rob's okay with that. Yeah, Eugene's just deciding if he has an action. He passes. Yeah, oh, yeah, and then he gets yeah. bowed. Yeah, and Eugene was, is, it was a little, had forgotten. Yeah, because I was going to say, like, I just feel like 
if he had known that was going to happen, yeah, he would have used his favorable ground to to move his guy back out of the conflict. No, I think he would. I think he would have just bowed. He might have. Right, because then you can just do a military conflict with the. I mean, I would have been. I would have. I maybe would have just bowed on the first shame, kept the honor. Just, it's one of uh, the right. Scorpion characters where honor is actually a, a pretty big boost. Yep. So Artisan buffing the Guest of Honor. Yep. It's going to put him to three, I believe. Or sorry, four? Four. And, uh, ooh, and a Komodo. Nice. So it's going to honor the Guest of Honor, which is actually going to turn on his Voice of Honor in Rob's hand. So that's a double win for him. And he gets to break the Shameful Display. So this is a really good first conflict for, for Rob. That worked out very well for uh, for Rob. So Rob gets to clean the urine now, and I think he gains two honor off the air ring. Yeah. Huh. Does that mean we're going to see some way of the Chrysanthemum uh, shenanigans this game? Oh man, I, w I would hope so. If, if he indeed does the contingency plan way of the Chrysanthemum, I'd be so happy. So he's going to do a, uh, a political something water. Here. Ooh, nice. Yeah, standard Yanako. I mean, if your opponent doesn't have anything in his hand, a steward of law or something like that. I mean, even if he had the steward, yeah, steward of law, he'd not win. Well, now, it's, right. now it's his turn. Uh, <laughs> if no. only he has something to trigger it, though. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he has anything. I see. I see a court games in his hand, which actually could, could uh, turn turn off the conflict. Yeah. Um. I don't know if. I, I feel Eugene like Eugene. Has an answer. I feel like Eugene should have done a well. I mean, I guess. If you did a military conflict, you use bonsai. But I think the reason he's doing political here is just so he can stand Yanako to do a military conflict. Yeah, absolutely. Afterward. So I actually I see a policy debate also in Rob's hand. But aside from that, I actually don't think there's much you can do here. No. All right, he passes. So he's going to lose an honor here for being undefended. So let's see if they remember that. Yes, they do. Stan Zinako. And uh, we're going to go into another conflict. This time, probably a void conflict, I feel like, would be the best case here. To uh, try to get that guess of honor off the table as quickly as possible. No, opts instead to go for fire. Fire military on the shameful display province of Inako. So this is almost certainly going to be a break here. And uh, he actually may be looking to rehonor his Yunako because he, he suspects uh, voice of honor. Yeah. Oh. Is that am I were we getting mixed up? Is that a for shame and not a court games? Because the court games and a voice and honor in his hand. I think he could have prevented that. Maybe he didn't realize that the stand yeah. was gonna be as bad as it was. Realizing that giving right. him the water ring was gonna because court games can be a little risky because if something else happens, then you're in trouble. But yep. if you can cancel the course, the responding uh, court games, then there's less to worry about. And another effect of him winning that, those two conflicts meant that he got the political favor this turn as well. So that put Eugene uh, slightly ahead going into the second turn. So 
So two liars and a Yunako. Uh, normally this would be a fairly weak draw, but uh, with Yunako having the ability to push through a military conflict, and then you have the liars both on political defense, also being immune to the stronghold's ability for Crane, and uh, also the ability to uh, possibly break a political conflict by themselves. Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, I did see a Pathfinder's Blade in Eugene's hand, so that confirms the Crab Splash. Yes. So I had Rob, uh, obviously, play, going with Phoenix. So uh, I feel like this is this is indeed different from uh, from Eugene's drop bear strategy that he employed in, during the uh, Imperial Summons event. He's going for a bit more of an aggressive style of Scorpion here. So if I were to guess, his splashes are probably Haruma Ambusher, Pathfinder's Blade, Reprieve. Potentially Watch Commander. Like, it's, yeah. it's possible you could be running two Watch Commanders, three Pathfinder Blades. Just thinking about this, trying to make sure they're making the right call. So easy first play for Eugene. Liar, he's probably gonna just play the other liar and pass. So he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be left with a lot of money going into the conflict phase. Asahina storyteller on Rob's side with two fate on it. Yep. So that's uh, I believe each honored character gains sincerity on Rob's side. Yes, and it has sincerity and it has itself, itself. Uh, as well as being I believe a two four. That's correct. So not it a card. Looks, it looks like Eugene passes preemptively. Yep. Flex of fate. So uh, just based on the characters I see this turn, it looks like Rob is uh, it's a it's a bit of a more mid-range uh, political deck with a heavy emphasis on honoring. So origami master, savvy politician, uh, magnificent kimono, as well as the storyteller yes. leads you to believe that he's trying to make a bit of a draw engine outside of, out of the storyteller itself. So Eugene actually only played one liar and then passed. So he just wants to choke uh, Rob out a little bit on face. Two and, then, and four. So that's yep. going to be two honor switching sides. Bring Eugene down to six. Yep. And uh, Rob's still at 14. At yeah, 15, sorry. So part of part of Eugene's dry see a reprieve. So that's going to keep. Plenty of fate to spend. Yeah. Pops his Imperial Stronghold to draw another card. Yeah, which was uh, another Pathfinder's Blade. He's probably going to slap that on Yunako here. So Rob is not familiar with Pathfinder Blade. Yeah, Path Pathfinder Blade is one of those really good breakout cards. Like it's It's been amazing for Dragon. Uh, but... Pretty much every uh, clan that has a seeker role at some point has tested with this card. It's uh, it's really good, especially considering some of the more devastated provinces like Shameful Display. So, do you want to tell people what it does? Because there's probably sure. a few people who are watching okay. that are it's still a, up on all the cards. It's a decks. crab. It's a crab attachment. Cost zero. Has plus one military, plus zero political. Seeker role only. And uh, the text on the card says uh, interrupt. When a province's triggered ability would initiate, you can discard the Pathfinder's Blade to cancel the effects. So you can just throw that on something, run into a province, could be an Endless Plains, could be a... Uh, restoration of Balance. Re restoration of Balance, it doesn't matter. You just sack the just sack the Pathfinder's Blade and you're immune from its effects. So he starts off by... Sorry, not starting off, but he's going to remember to just grab an honor back from... Rob using the City of the Open Hand. And then he's going to start up by declaring a military earth conflict on an unrevealed province with just Yunako running into the Art, a of Peace. Art of Peace. So Art of Peace, it was in the core set. It's the, the um, Crane province. Basically, when it's broken, all defending characters are honored, all attacking characters are dishonored. So it's like a mega shameful display. Yes. That, <laughs> only if you lose the province. Yes. Which is a bit of a double-edged sword, because you, if you throw too many characters in because you want to get them honored, it's not going to break. 
Well, I mean, this is a great place for actually him to throw Savvy Politician in. Yes. So Savvy Politician, I mean, if he's willing to lose another province, he may want to try to defend here, but uh, Yunako's pretty strong right now. Yeah. Well, I also, but, and then he's, it's also got a Pathfinder Blade, so I don't think Yunako's going to want, sorry, Eugene's not going to want the Art of Peace to be triggered. I thought it was on the only on the reveal effects. No, triggered abilities. Oh, sorry. So on breaking, on reveal, action abilities. Okay. All that stuff. That's why everybody's trying to play yeah, okay. it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, you either just let this go, in which case it doesn't trigger, or uh, you defend it aggressively, hoping to... Uh, I don't know, but but I, because he's running Phoenix, like I don't think he's got any sort of attachment control. So, um, and and his military isn't that great either. Yeah, he's just gonna let this go undefended. And that's, starts the path later made to prevent the dishonor. Yeah, he he only used it to prevent the dishonor. That's uh, well, he's got another Pathfinder blade in his hand. I mean, you might as well. So plucking True a. Earth. Censure. Censure. Not, not meaningful at all. Yeah. Just looking at his options here. It's getting pretty loud in here. We do have a bunch of uh, magic drafts running. Yeah, the unstable uh, release happened this weekend, so they're doing draft till you drops here. Rob's considering a void conflict. Get rid of Yunako a turn earlier is going to be pretty great for him. Yeah, unbeknownst to Rob, though, Eugene has a reprieve in his hand. This is not going to do a lot for him. I feel like I feel it's like one, if it's one, it's still one less yeah. turn, whether he has a reprieve or not. Now here's a meditation. So speaking of removing something a turn earlier. Yeah. So currently it looks to be uh, four, five, six. Yeah. As far as uh, political strength goes. So if he threw the liar in, he could prevent the break. Which actually might be the correct play here. It, that's, that's, I, that I, one, yeah. Actually, yeah. I mean, I see I see an unassuming Yojimbo in Eugene's hand, so he could let this break, then he could play the Yojimbo and uh, covert past the Guest of Honor. Fair. With both the Yojimbo and the liar, and then break another province. But, uh, uh, nope, chooses to defend instead. So first action goes to, to Eugene. I have a feeling we'll see a um, court games on the Savvy Politician. Yes. Which will be an additional three strength uh, on Rob's side. I think I think court games uh, follows following into a uh, policy debate using your storyteller, which is going to be six uh, political strength might be a really good play as well. That would be a really good play. Just Get rid to of see that what, policy. Yeah, debate. he's working with. But oh, Yanako from the hand. Sorry, yeah, no, sorry, Bayushi. Uh, what's her name? Machiko. No, Kachiko. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, <laughs> Was oh, huge. So this this thing is brutal. It it sends home and bows a character as long as it has higher uh, political strength. Which actually, if Rob uh, plays court games here, he can actually prevent the storyteller from going home because uh, both both Kachiko and uh, storyteller will both be at six. So let's see if he sees that play. And is that an omit defeat I see in his hand as well? No, Voice of Honor. So actually, he also plays the Voice of Honor. 
sorry, yeah. Playing the Cork Davis also turns on his voice of honor, but we're going to see a forged edict here, and Rob can't, he can't voice of honor that because they both have an honored character to play. So Bayushi Lair getting the dishonor here, uh, doesn't matter at all as far as strength goes. And now we see a policy debate between Kachiko and the savvy politician. I feel like savvy politician should get an automatic plus three on, on policy debate. <laughs> you think, yeah, it, it makes sense. <laughs> One and two, all right. Yeah, One so to make sure it goes through. I mean, his hand is uh, small enough already that it doesn't really matter. I would probably take the for shame here, I think. But it doesn't actually matter because I think Eugene's gonna win this conflict. Because he's gonna, gone. Yeah, he's gonna send home his storyteller. I feel. Why? Because you get to bow. Oh, bow too. Yeah, it gets bowed. So this is a storehouse crack. There's the favorable ground, so you could actually save it to move her in and use it another time. That is true. Yes. Poor Rob. Rob's just like, oh yeah, meditations, right. Okay. Although you just, you you send home and bow the storyteller, then you send home Kachiko. And then the only thing, well, I guess, because the guest of honor is actually uh, at six strength as well, so you couldn't use Kachiko on that guest of honor. Yeah. Unless you somehow were able to uh, honor Kachiko. So here's a fan on the storyteller. So that's gonna bring him to six, so now that actually makes it immune to Kachiko. But Eugene's that's, that's still winning matter. this conflict. Yeah, and here's the way of the scorpion. And now uh, the door's open once again. And remember, Eugene is operating with perfect information of Rob's hand. So uh, I think he's like just very confident he's gonna win this. I think he was just thinking potentially a policy debate against the liar. That would make it a four, four versus three. Uh, I think I think that was the play with the fan yeah. was to try to make that potential. But Eugene has so many cards in his hand. Like, I usually don't want to like. I don't know. He, he's losing already yeah. the conflict. I don't know. I think he may want to save the policy debate for when the guest of honor is in uh, in a conflict. And so as we predicted, Eugene cracks his favorable ground, sending home Pachico. After sending home the storyteller, bowed. Uh, you know, one thing I will note, though, he forgot to actually trigger the meditations of the Tao before no, he doing that ability. So he took one off the uh, storyteller. Oh, was there two fate on the storyteller? There was two fate on the storyteller. Okay, story. sorry, I must have missed that. Ah, uh, Pathfinder blade. This is this is so disheartening when you see that, and then because you're like, ha ha ha, you're gonna run into my province, and you play that card. So Rob's just pointing out that he missed his own seeker earlier. Yeah. Uh, Eugene, because he took it late as well, is why yeah. he's fine with him taking it, even though nice guy. we're well past the point in the game. So we're going to see a political conflict here. Yeah. Uh, fire conflict. No, that's no triggered ability. It's in trench position, but yeah, it doesn't matter because it's uh, political. What six? Six political. Yeah. Uh, fire. I feel like Rob wants to defend this. He I don't feel like I don't think no. There's no point. Yanako still has to use his ability. So, guest of honor is. Oh, charge? Oh, sorry, what? 
Oh, Yunako has a use ability. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, too many Bayushis to keep track of. That's alright? Yeah. So this is actually seven political strike because of the imperial favor on Eugene's sure. side. Yeah. Eugene's just pointing that out. So four, five, six. Eugene not able to play any uh, events, so if Rob has something that can maybe dishonor or bow Chico. But uh, instead, oh, nothing gets played. He wins the ring but does not break the province. Yeah, I guess even if uh, he would have reversed... Yep. Um, so they did miss the pride trigger, which is a force trigger. Should probably let him know. Uh, we won't like if they miss an opportunity. We won't we won't tell them. But if it's actually something that's forced and affects the board state, um, since we're also judges for the event, we'll uh, give them a heads up. So yeah, uh, yeah. Even if he had used Yunako, he would have been one short of breaking the province. Yep. Eugene might want his fate, but which is Rob is pointing out now, oh, or not? He's just pointing out for his player. So, uh, you know, a pretty mediocre flop for Eugene right now. But he also has a lot of, uh, it still has characters in his hand. So the fact that his dynasty is not that strong, probably it's not a big concern for him. Rob, Rob does have some characters to work with, but he's got an uphill battle. Victor's just reminding them to reset the rings, put out some favor. And uh, now we're just waiting on Rob to decide which character he wants to put into play. So he is going to go with his champion. And with two fate. I expect Eugene will at least put the liar into play. I feel like this turn you just play all your guys out. I don't know. You because what you can do is uh, you have uh, you have superior military strength with just Yunako and Seppin Guardsmen. You send those both in to break yeah. the province. Preferably the non entrenched position one. I don't know. Uh, then you uh, just just declare an all out political against the stronghold. Field. Grass Samurai coming out on the Rob, uh, Rob side. Yeah, the Seppin Guardsman with one fake. Interesting. Yep. Yeah, I guess uh, if, if you're showing a distinct lack of military prowess on your dynasty flop, you just may want to ensure that that thing is going to be sticking around for another, another turn. But yeah, he's just, I think he's just going to play all of his guys I think out. So. And likely steal it on honor as well. Yep. They've been here forever. If he remembers. Oh, he had a Chico, two Chico duplicates in his hand. Oh my god. So two more fade on her. I'm gonna take it to military. And that's still the honor. So, yeah, it's a very difficult position. Rob's engine, uh, unfortunately, because he's playing against Scorpion, 
uh, hasn't really triggered the storyteller at least once. I'm not even sure if he's really going to do anything by the time this game is over. So it actually gives one honor back to Eugene. Court Mask and Way of the Scorpion, the draw here. Yeah, it looks like a Forest Shame, and I didn't see the last two cards on Rob's side. So just a reminder to people watching, we are doing three rounds today. This is the second of those three rounds. Uh, so we'll be back uh, after this game for one more. And you can find these and other matches on our YouTube channel. So if you happen to be on Twitch, you can check us out, VTTV Live, on YouTube as well, uh, to watch these and uh, earlier matches. I think this may be our last live stream uh, before the holidays. Uh, but fo for folks who do watch multiple games, we will be covering uh, the X-Wing Regionals uh, from here in Toronto on the 6th of January. And then uh, I'm certain at least one L5R tournament later in the month. Uh, and hopefully be bringing some individual videos from some yeah. casual play in between. Hopefully when uh, when the quarterly kits get released for, for L5R, if indeed there are quarterly kits, yeah. we're going to be doing those at least once a month. Uh, Destiny Regionals is happening 26th of January. Uh, we're going to see if we can get some of that going on for you. And, and if you want to make sure you're reminded about some of these things or see when new videos show up on our channel, please go subscribe on our channel. If you have any other L5R fans who are looking for good uh, gameplay content, let them know. Uh, we'll be producing content on a pretty regular basis for Legend of the Five Rings. They're right. He did take the Fire Ring uh, last turn. They were just debating on... They, put, they left too many rings out and put too much faith in it. So looking through Eugene's hand, definitely has the tools to push through a province break on a military conflict this turn. The, uh, the Pathfinder Blade on the Kachiko is a bit awkward, but... Kachiko could just send anyone home. Yeah, at this point she's sitting at 8 political strength. Eight? Is that, does she not have three honor? Three, uh, three honor. Sorry, nine political. Three uh, glory. <laughs> but it's uh, Rob so that's experimental uh, large political battle he's declaring. Yeah. Somewhere. Starting strength of 15. But I mean, you know, Kachiko can come in and send Ataru homebound. Yep. And what, what did he do? He did a air ring? You know, I feel like, I feel like you even, you could even just let this go. And then you counterattack with political and then uh, a military conflict on the stronghold. Yep. And that's GG. So that is a pilgrimage, I believe, was the province that got yeah. revealed. So he did remember to take his fate for yep. Void Ring this time, uh, for uh, the Seeker roll. So if he doesn't break the province, he doesn't get to trigger the air ring. Uh, does have does have a lot of political strength, but I just feel like it'd be in Eugene's best interest to just let this go. But no, she's an incentive to defend with Kachiko. Uh, she can send home Guest of Honor. She can send home Kataru. Kataru too. Yeah, it's a, a bit grim. And then Yunako can switch some stuff around if you really want. Also commits the liar. I assume he's... 
So yeah, sending home the guests of honor. Now that lit- that lets them opens up events. Yeah. Now, um, I think what Eugene's plan may be for this turn is just to do a military break, perhaps, and then because going He'll be into first player. Yeah, first player plus uh, Rob's gonna be losing the storyteller, the brass samurai, and the guest of honor this turn. So what was that card he just played? For shame. For shame. On Kachiko or the liar? So I'm just gonna remove the honor off okay. of Kachiko. So now only at uh, 10, I believe, political strength yeah. for So he's playing court games on Rob, so Rob has to choose. All he can do is put it on Hataru. So now it's uh, 10 for Eugene and 7. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. I forgot to put the dishonor. They're forgetting the political favor, so... Sorry. I realize I'm the only one who's hearing the table audio, so I'm, I'm responding to things yeah. that they're saying you guys don't know. Ooh. Ornate fan bringing uh, Taro back up to nine. Or sorry, bringing his side up to nine. But I mean, why... why The win is not worth anything. Maybe, uh, maybe Rob thinks he can push something through. I... Don't know if there's any other cards in his hand though. Like it may I, be I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried that he's debate, thinking though. that he really wants Sotaro to. Ooh, kimono. So the kimono brings him up to ten. But Eugene has so many cards in his hand. This just doesn't seem like a. Doesn't seem like it'll actually do anything. Because now all he has to do is play court mask on the liar. You know, instead decides to force shame, and because she's already dishonored, yep. there goes a huge bow. And that just cuts off a whole, what, three, four, five, six? Five? Six, sorry, yeah. Both their thefts. So successful defense on uh, Eugene's side. Yeah. And so I feel like we're going to see maybe a water ring counterattack, military, to maybe stand Kachiko. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Suspected it's gonna be a water uh, military conflict against the unrevealed province with Kachiko and perhaps the guardsmen, or maybe he's gonna hang the guardsmen back on defense hey, just God. for the brass samurai. <laughs> nope, he's gonna throw in the guardsmen as well. He has to assume that the yeah. samurai is going to defend this. So this is before the throne got revealed. Five uh, strength province, and when the province is broken, he gets to take two honor from Eugene. So it's a, it's a good thing that Rob didn't win that double air ring. Uh, otherwise, Eugene may have been really pressured to not break this province. But as it stands, you're looking at eight military to zero. If Rob decides to defend with his brass samurai, he can bring it up to four, which is uh, not, a, not enough to break the province. But of course, we know that Eugene has a fine katana, bonsai, and a court mask in his hand. Oh, 
Rob's just being careful, making sure that he's not missing anything, any opportunities that he might have. deciding on defenders I think it's uh, I just feel like it's in Rob's best interest to let this go like I understand that that now brings him uh, open to attack politically on the stronghold but I think you're kind of forced into a race situation and that's what indeed he does decides not to defend loses an honor but then takes to honor from Eugene and of course, Eugene will stand for Chico. I guess you've got to uh, you try attacking, try to take the fire ring, make it harder for yeah. um, the Chico to, to break your stronghold. This, uh, this voice of honor in Rob's hand really hasn't been useful all game. Policy debate is not going to be much use against Kachiko either. So it looked like Rob passed his conflict, perhaps. So he's going to go into with the unassuming Yajimbo, which is, of course, going to covert that brash samurai. This might be the, the killing blow here. And yeah, all the Otomo courtiers, the big courtier herself, and the unassuming Yajimbo at the stronghold with a Pathfinder's Blade. This is Rally the Cause, it's not going to do anything. So yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, no defenders, uh, no cards in hand. This uh, ring choice is really just academic. Yeah, so Pathfinder Blade goes away to prevent the yep. rally from triggering. Yep. So there's a handshake. All right, so that was uh, actually a very good example of uh, Bayushi Kachiko use. Um, I was skeptical about her being a very expensive conflict card. But uh, Eugene uh, really demonstrated its uh, its ability, especially in uh, against a deck that has po high political strength of their own. So that's going to be a conclusion of round two.